Hey guys, this is Aaron. We are on our sixth and final chess piece here in SketchUp Free. This is probably the most complex chess piece we're gonna make. It is the knight, or the horse, as some people like to call it. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into my base just like I have before. If you haven't seen it already, we did go through the process of modeling all these other pieces. Videos are below. I suggest you take a look. And the knight's going to be a little different because it's not symmetric. I can't make it with a follow me like I did the other pieces. What I have to do instead is actually create some pretty intricate geometry uh, right here on top of the base. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a simple line and I'm just going to put that across the middle. I'm using the red axis. I'm just going outside corner to corner. And what I want to do is the body of the horse is going to be kind of an arc shape like this on the ground, or on, on the base. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab my arc. I want to draw an arc with only a couple segments, four segments actually to be specific. I'm going to hit four, enter, and I'm going to click point to point and pull that out pretty far, something like that. Now, I'm going to double click on this because I want the surface and the line selected and right click and make a component. This component is going to be half of a knight, a knot, a knight. All right, um, just for the fun of seeing how this builds, I'm going to take it and I'm going to make a copy. So I'm going to use move. I'm using my modifier key to slide it over. Now, I want this to be the other half of the knight, so I'm gonna actually use scale to click and drag through. There we go. And now move it so it lines up like this. So a question right now would be, why couldn't I just use rotate to spin that around? Rotate will actually make it face backwards. Again, being a non-symmetric piece, as I come up and draw it with the face coming this way, if I rotated the other half, the face would be pointing the other direction on the back half. Um, kind of spoken like somebody who tried that and maybe found out that it didn't work. All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use push-pull, and I'm going to pull this base up a little bit. Again, we're being arbitrary with numbers here, I know. Now I'm going to hold down, or I'm going to tap the Option key, and that's going to be a little plus next to my push-pull, because that's going to create a whole new surface. I'm going to do that a couple times. Each time, tap Option and drag it up. Click, Option, click, click, Option, click, click, and Option, click, click, until I get six sections about the same size. You can see they're not exact, but like I said, that's okay, because what we're doing is uh, we're doing a little freeform sculpting right now, not precision modeling. All right, so I have my blocks here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start by using the Scale command. I'm going to come in here and drag left to right, drag a solid select window to get that top surface. Then I'm going to use scale to kind of make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to actually pull it back this way a little bit. That looks pretty good. And uh, this, again, not precision, but with each edge, scale, and then pull it around a little bit. All right, so there we go. So we have kind of a, a sweeping shape right now. Don't worry about these extra lines. What's happening right now is uh, it's automatically breaking these planes as scale distorts them. Not a big deal. It's actually going to work to our benefit in the end. Um, I might want to pull this out a little bit here. So I'm going to use the move command to grab, say, this line right here. So one of the things that's happening right now, because we copy that component on both sides, we're seeing both halves. This is great. This is going to be awesome. It means it cuts my uh, modeling time in half, and I can always jump out and see what the full thing looks like. The downside is if I want to do something like grab this line right on the edge, it can be a little bit tricky because right now when it's giving me that no, that anti-symbol, it's telling me it's actually picking the line on the opposite side. So one of the things I can do right now is go into display, and I can say, hide similar components. I'm editing this component. This component is a copy. If I have hide similar components turned on, it's still there. So if I exit editing the component, it comes back. But as long as I'm in here, it's going to hide it. This is great because this makes it easier to do things like use move to select a line 
and pull it out like this. All right, so the idea here, like I said before, is just we're kind of kind of making a smooth shape, not nothing real specific. Uh, one of the commands I want to use right now is move, and I'm going to use move without anything selected. One of the cool things you can do with move is if you hover over a point, is actually pull that individual point. So I'm going to pick, make sure I get the point and not zoom here a little tighter. There we go. Pick the end point and pull that out. So what I'm really looking for, I'm going to bring this one back. I'll bring this one back too a little bit. Don't want to get the surface, but just the points and uh, move them around. I can use the axes as reference as I do this to kind of get the shape I'm looking for. That looks pretty good. Um, I want to kind of move more of this mass up front, so I'm going to use the move on these points to actually bring this line so it goes closer to the front of the body. And I'm going to do that by clicking on a point, then I'm going to tap the right arrow key to snap it to the red axes. I'm going to do the same thing now with the back. I'm going to pull some of these points backwards a little bit. Again, hitting the right arrow each time to snap to the red axes. All right, last couple things I'm going to do here. I'm just going to clean up this top a little bit. Bring this point in ever so slightly along the green axes. Maybe this one too a little, just a touch. And again, just kind of trying to make some nice, nice looking arcs here. That looks pretty good. If I exit out, I can kind of take a look at what that looks like as a full piece. That looks pretty good. And onto the head. So I'm going to double click to enter the component again. I'm going to start by using push pull to just pull this surface up. I might do the same thing I did before. I'm going to use option, pull up, option, pull up. It's going to give me a base that I can build the head upon. All right, so from here, I'm going to do a couple things. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and break up the top of the head. I'm going to do that by drawing a line across. That's going to let me not have just, just that flat point, but actually give me a, some option to smooth that out a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing with these points. Draw a couple lines across. And one of the big things I need here is I need to bring this snout out for uh, his muzzle. Um, this isn't going to work. I can't just grab this surface and pull it this way, so I'm just going to draw a couple lines along the red axes, blue axes, and click to there. Same thing on this side. Red axes out to here. Click. Click. There we go. And I might use a uh, push pull to push that back in. And then like I did before, use option modifier key on there to pull out a second piece. So now at this point, we're back ready to do some sculpting. Oh, before I actually sculpt, one thing I am going to want to do here before I start pushing planes around too much is I'm going to come in here and put the ear on. I want to do this beforehand because I want to get this nice vertical surface straight up. Whoops. I, I misclicked from the midpoint there. There we go. Straight up. Back to here. Here, up to here. That looks good. I'm going to come across like that and make it a little bit wider at the bottom. Looks good. I'm going to use some inferencing. So I'm going to click right here, hover over this line, and then draw a line parallel back to here, and then close that up like that. There you go. I want to get that ear in now, like I said, because this surface won't end up being this nice flat surface that it is now. So drawing the ear in now keeps me from having any issues in the future. So at this point, I'm going to use that same move command to just move some lines around. I'm going to use inferencing whenever possible to lock onto a specific axis and kind of shape this into the head of a horse. Here we go.
All right, so something like that looks pretty good. Um, obviously, we need to do a little bit of cleanup here. Two things I want to take care of right now. One is coming around to this side. So right now, if you recall correctly, we used option to create a bunch of new surfaces in here, which means this is not a solid right now because it's seg segmented inside, has all these separate pieces. So one of the first things I'm going to do here is use erase to come in and just get rid of all these lines in the back. That's not only going to get rid of lines in the back, but it's actually going to get rid of the surfaces they create on the inside. So I'm going to come across all of these all the way up. And there we go. And then finally, I can actually pick and delete this piece right here. I don't need that. And I have the surface down here in the bottom. I don't need that either. And actually, I created some uh, Actually, I created some surfaces on the inside as I was pulling geometry around. So get rid of those extra lines. This one right here. So it's kind of nice. I can look at the half of it and make sure it looks good. I do have a reversed face right here. So I'm going to right click and say reverse face. All right, so that's what I should see. One thing I want to take a look at is in the ear up here. Make sure that if I spin underneath. Oh, see, there's an issue. Extra extra service right there. Delete that. All right, that looks good. So, last thing I'm going to do before I go hop out and check the other half is to triple click, come over here to display again, scroll all the way to the bottom again, and I'm going to turn on my smoothing and softening. Ooh, there we go. So, I'm going to drag that until the edges pretty much disappear. And then I can click out and see how that horse looks. A little wide in the face, but you get the idea. So this is good enough to represent a uh, a knight in my chess set. I'm going to select both halves, right click, and explode them. That's going to bring all the geometry back into a single container. Um, if I pick it right now, though, if I do look at my entity info, it does say it's group. It is not a solid group, uh, just like I did before. I'm going to come in here, spin to the bottom, double click to enter the group, right click and hide the bottom. And I can see I actually have a piece breaking right here. So I can use erase to get rid of that. And I have a couple extra lines here, it looks like, created from when I moved some of those points around on top of the base. That actually could have been fixed by modeling off the base altogether and then adding it onto the base later, but uh, not, a, not a huge deal. Uh, that's cleaned up. Um, I can come in here now, hidden objects, select that bottom, right click, unhide it, and if I go check my entity info now, I get a solid group again. I can turn hidden objects off, and I can take a look at all of my chess pieces at once, and they look awesome, ready to be printed, and I could play some chess, maybe in the next video. That's it for now though. Thank you.